and welcome to the second season of the Green and Gold Gridiron Show. My name is Margo Morin. And I'm Chris Sheets, Afternoon Drive host on Kissin' Country 103.9. While well, we're back for another year, Margo, it's amazing. I <laughs> thought we'd get cut for sure, uh, but it's an exciting show. Some things stay the same, but we've got some brand new things to introduce. And speaking of brand new things, we have a brand new segment for you called The Fifth Quarter. This is where we're going to check out some of the Eskimos alumni and see what they're up to lately. First, we have the CFL Hall of Fame linebacker, Danny Bass. Dan here, can I help you? Business has been good. You know, uh, last year it's, you know, in Alberta it was a little trying time, but this year, hey, numbers are up and uh, things are going good. So when we got inventory, last year we didn't have much inventory. I actually started back home. I did it during the off season one time, selling cars, and uh, I enjoyed it. And same thing coming out here, been associated with Lakewood for, Jesus, you know, since 88. And, uh, they understood I was really here to play football, but they in the off season I could come in and sell some cards, get a little bit of experience, and uh, it helped out great for me. I had a lot of fun, met a lot of good people. Uh, you know what? And that's you better enjoy life while you can because it goes by awfully quick, and and uh, it's hard to believe it's been 20 some years. Everybody's dream is to win the Grey Cup, and uh, you know we we came up short in '86 and '87. We finally won, and. Uh, you know, that kind of took a burden off because one of my goals was I didn't want to play 10 years and, and uh, never win a great cup. You know, the thing I remember the most is the, the fun that we had, uh, you know, during the games, but also off the field. Uh, we were doing all kinds of practical jokes on each other. And, and I think that's what I miss more about being around the team than anything is, uh, you know, every year we always come up with a new gag or something to get somebody and I, I enjoyed that that was fun I can't complain uh, uh, still no uh, zipper mark on my knees uh, I don't have any aches and pains uh, so uh, you know I've been very lucky but uh, my philosophy was always to avoid the doctor and uh, the body will take care of itself so I have no problems I, I've been very blessed with that You know, Chris, it's hard to believe how many great players have donned the green and gold. Just true champions. It's true, and not just players from the past either. You know, today's players are champions too, not just on the field, but in the community as well. And we're going to take a closer look at some of their efforts starting today with a high school football camp. I'm really excited. It's a good, good chance to come back and help out and uh, teach the kids what I know and uh, Spend on that knowledge and uh, kind of transfer it on to them. So I'm, I'm super excited about being here. You guys got it? Down pat? Pretty a vital age, I guess, they're going into. Uh, uh, they're going to extend their career into, you know, junior football or university. So, I mean, they need to know the hard work, the, you know, uh, fundamentals, the knowledge of what it takes to uh, get onto the second level. Ready? So, half of you guys down there. So, let's go. You four right here. You four down here. It's great. You know, so many kids here come out and just want to get better and everything. and. You know, there's been players who've made the team who've been at this camp, you know, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not one of those players, but it's, it's a great experience for everyone, and they all get better at the end of the day. Catch it with your hands, catch it high. We're going to teach them, you know, how to, how to get in and out of routes, how to be quicker, how to think smarter as a football player, and uh, some of the things like stemming their routes at the, and uh, coming in and out of their breaks, it's, that, that's pretty much what we're going to try and teach them, and just to get faster and better and understand that it is a quick game out here. We're going to start with some basics, kind of get into it, uh, just talk about hard work and uh, work ethic and just giving it your all and then we're going to get kind of get into some more complex stuff as the weekend or the week uh, progresses, so kind of looking at that. Ready? Oh. They get their technique already, they're, they're old enough, but I'll give them uh, little tricks to get better and to, more, to be more accurate for sure, but uh, it's all uh, about the, foot, the footing and uh, just like angle and I'll, I think they'll learn a lot. Yeah, a lot of these kids, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of options out there. There's junior football, there's uh, university. So this kind of gives them a chance to come out and, uh, you know, learn some more skills and work on the skills they have. And hopefully, you know, uh, they can move on to that next level, whether it be junior or the university. So it's, uh, it's a great experience for them. So. Keep an eye on those kids. We actually may see them shortly. Margo, what was your favorite segment from last year? Mine, hands down, had to be Out of Bounds. Well, then you're in luck. And this year in Out of Bounds, we've doubled its awesomeness, breaking it into two parts. 
So the first, we're going to sit down with the players and chat with them a little bit. And then the second half, we're going to check out the activity a little bit more in depth. How about if we just show you, here's some of the O-line getting up close and personal with a very special opponent, a gold opponent, let's say, you might recognize. I'm from a small town near Winnipeg, Kenora, Ontario. A lot of curling out there, but uh, I, I tried it when I was young, when I was probably 12 to 14, and uh, wasn't very good at it then, so I don't know that I'm going to be any better now. <laughs> nice weight, Koch, nice weight. I'm not talking about the stone either. No curling experience to date. Um, that's a first for me, so uh, I got my two partners in crime here to help me out a little bit. They had the uh, Scott Tournament of Hearts there in, in Sault Ste. Marie just prior to the Olympic Games and uh, that's where I'm from, so it was kind of a big deal back home and, and uh, kind of got uh, everyone kind of interested in the sport a little bit and my parents talked about it quite a bit and got the, got the juices flowing for them too. So yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting game and I uh, hope to learn something today. I don't know what hand I want to throw it with. You can throw it with either one, can't you? That's legal, I don't, I don't know what the rules are around here. Never even had any interest in curling until I watched it on the Olympics this year and then I thought, wow, that'd be fun to try and then now I'm here, so. <laughs> It's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't follow curling at all until until this year. And I lived with Kyle and Aaron. They had to they had to watch curling every night, so I kind of had no choice but to get into it. So it it looks like a, a fun sport to play, and I'm sure it's harder than it looks. It's a pretty exciting opportunity to come out here with somebody who's won a gold medal as the best in the world at something, and you get to come out here and do it with them. That's 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 a pretty neat experience. Maybe not so much for him. I mean. <laughs> I thought, I thought the skip doesn't have to sweep. I'll probably do the worst because I, I have no experience on ice. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say either Kyle or Aaron. Will, they'll be evenly matched and I'll be way, way down after that. So. But I'm not throwing anymore. Well, I think I have a chance. Uh, I don't know. I've done it a couple times. Judging by my practice round, it's not going to help at all. So I really have no idea. I need the brooms. Well, I think uh, just naturally based on athleticism, I'd have to say myself. I think, uh, I think that the other two guys, uh, they're handicapped a little bit. Um, you know. <laughs> Just uh, the way they're built and designed, uh, I think I, I bring a little bit more to the table in the curling uh, field. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, and um, you know, uh, I'll give it my all, and uh, I'll be, all, you know, hopefully I come out on top today. We'll see what happens. Remember to stay tuned for the second part of Out of Bounds as our O-line takes on Kevin Martin in a special closest to the button challenge. I can't wait, Margo. You know, as much as I've uh, looked forward to and working with all of these athletes, I think it's been really cool, but I think I'm really going to look forward to working with this next group. Not that the football players aren't good looking, but I'm just saying they're the best in the CFL. They're the Eskimo cheerleaders. We've got a new segment. We're going to follow them throughout the year, and it's called Cheers. Let's check it out. Also lots of nerves, but I think it's going to be a really good day overall. I'm nervous, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really nervous, I guess. My sister's actually trying out, so I'm nervous for her. But it's, it's a lot better uh, knowing what to expect and not being the new one anymore. <laughs> it's huge, like everyone's just like buzzing. You walk in the change room, it's hot, and there's girls practicing, there's girls doing makeup. It's just positive energy everywhere. So. I love the Eskimos. I'm really passionate about performing and I love everything they do in the community, so I'm just hoping I can make it. There's tons of talent. Everybody's so excited and they're all practicing and it looks amazing so far. There's been one already kind of prelude to it and then two workshops as well as two tryouts this past week and then we have today and I don't think there's been anyone that's really dropped out so everybody's really excited I think the people that are here really want to be here every year veterans and rookies both have to try out nobody's guaranteed a spot on the team it's the best talent that comes out I dance at the University of Alberta currently um, it's my third year on the team there, so, and this is my second year trying out for the Eskimos, so I'm excited. <laughs> whole different style of dance now than it was 10 years ago. So while the numbers have been consistent, it's a very different 
girl that's trying out now, a different type of dancer. Hip hop, tap, jazz, musical theater, tap line, lyrical, everything. <laughs> So definitely um, rookies kind of watch the vets to see what's going on. I know I did last year, and it's a really great experience. Veterans have been so accommodating. They've been helping us with the steps if we've got questions, and like, they give us a couple tips as to what to wear and how to present yourself today. So uh, they've been really helpful and all really friendly. It's probably top-notch, if not the best in the CFL, I think, for a cheer squad. So I think... Uh, yeah, it's kudos to them, uh, the coaches, the directors of the organization, and uh, they're just doing an outstanding job, and uh, they've raised the bar. Obviously, it's going to be a very exciting and busy year with Grey Cup here being the host city. We're going to be putting on a whole bunch of different events, cheer extravaganza, parades, performances, and that's on top of all the regular stuff we do, um, from the Klondike Days Parade to all the home games different performances throughout the city. So it's going to be an exciting and very busy year this year. All right, it's Chris Sheets joined by a couple of very special guests. First of all, it's the president of the Edmonton Eskimos, Rick Lalisher. Rick, we got an important event coming up for the city and really for the province on November 28th. The good news is we don't have to worry about selling any more tickets, do we? No, we sure don't. Uh, the tickets were just went wildfire and uh, we're so pleased it's great and uh, the thing that I, I noticed you were commenting about as well we know Edmonton would step up to this but I mean you sold tickets for across the country across North America we did uh, I think about a dozen states and every province and territory in Canada so that's been great and big support from our seat and seat holders uh, right off the bat and I think that's what gave us the base to be able to do that yeah, it's going to be a great season here for sure. So we've talked about the game. It's sold out now, but uh, Dwayne Vino, who is the executive director of the Great Cup Committee, is with us. There's a bunch of other activities that even if you don't have tickets for the game for, you're going to get a chance to enjoy. Yeah, you know, we're starting our festival on the Thursday prior to Grey Cup, and, and we have events, uh, approximately 40 events outside of the game that we're running Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, and the facility right behind us here, the new Northeast Rec Center, is going to host our, our tailgate party, and we're really excited about that. Um, we have a parade, we have the Players Awards, the gala dinner, the whole downtown family festival, which we're covering Sir Winston Churchill Square with a heated tent structure, and it's really going to be for activity-based programming for the family. So we just have a lot of things planned, and we're really excited about it. Thank you very much. More details about all this coming up. With the Great Cup in Edmonton this year, you can be sure our Eskimos are keeping themselves in top condition in the offseason, and we get a chance to see that in full effect right now. It's a segment called Pro Fitness, where we look at the Eskimos going through their workout routine. How's it going guys, Aaron Fee Cohen, the Evans Eskimos uh, Center, offensive lineman. Uh, I'm going to take you through a little bit of my routine. Monday, usually we start out with a heavy bench press and, and a back day. Uh, Tuesday, we got to mix it up, we go a little lighter, stay off the weights. We'll do an MMA workout and a little bit of boxing in the morning, uh, followed by a football specific workout. Wednesday, I kind of slow down a little bit, I do a little bit of hot yoga. That's kind of good to keep the flexibility in play, uh, plus it prepares you mentally. Uh, then we start in Thursday again, I kind of do a repeat of Tuesday. I'll go through a boxing MMA workout in the morning. Uh, and then I go into another football workout Thursday uh, evening with the coaching staff again, much like I do on Tuesday. It uh, all culminates on Friday where I do a lot of power day. Typically today I'm gonna gonna work heavy at bicep and tricep as well, because uh, uh, offensive linemen are notorious to, for holding, uh, which is a, not a good thing, not a good thing. But uh, you gotta have good strong arms to control your defender, so that's one thing I like to work on and strive for too. It aids me in my game. Uh, this lift in general, I guess, in specific is uh, push press. Basically, offensive linemen use a lot of uh, extension with their arms finish through a lot of hip strength. Uh, it all starts with the upper body pretty much. Uh, any good trainer uh, trains offensive line, the football players in Pacific, it's good to have explosive strength uh, within the shoulders and throughout your chest. And this exercise I'm gonna do next is uh, body weight dips. I find it really good for uh, tricep strength. Usually try and get good four sets in. Usually I'll start to wait a little bit after, but uh, try and maximize your reps. I'd probably go up to 15. This generates a pretty powerful pass punch, I find. It transfers well to the field as well. Same with your pectorals. It's kind of a full upper body exercise. Uh, the next lift I'm going to do is called hand cleans. It's uh, really sport specific. I find a lot of athletes use it for explosion, uh, especially for offensive linemen. Everything is through the hips, your explosion. So this is something I've been doing since college. I've been doing it really well. Um, it's a great exercise. I mean, anyone from a novice athlete to professional, I think this is something you should be learn to be good at. It's definitely going to help yourself and your explosion throughout the way. 
So this left here is just basically a close grip. I like to explode right out of it though. I use a nice little pause at the bottom. Helps you control so you eliminate the bouncing part. The full extension lockout. Pull for the better part of two seconds at the top too. I'm Aaron Fiacone, the Eskimos. I'd like to thank you for coming this Friday to watch me lift. You know, Margo, being at field level during games, you really get an idea how fit and strong football players have to be. That's true, Chris, but how well would they compete against an Olympic gold medalist? We're going to see that next in the second part of Out of Bounds, where the O-line goes curling with 2010 Olympic gold medalist Kevin Martin. Sweep! So you got some dream team curlers out here, or what? Not so much. <laughs> Hey, Kelvin. Kelvin? Yeah. Kelvin, hi. Actually, a pleasure to meet you. Hi, I'm Kyle. Nice Kyle? Kelvin, hi. Nice to meet no, you. No, hi. <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Hey, nice to meet What's you. What's up, man? Cool, cool. Uh, oh, good balance going? Oh, we're getting cool. there, man. Slow for sure. <laughs> Here, guys, you brought some bling with me, too. You, oh, you seen yeah, them on the medals yet? Yeah, yeah, no, I, we haven't got to see it yet. That's oh, a real treat, man. Oh, Jesus. Heavy. Is it? Man, that is, that's pretty special. Beautiful, Well, you earned that, too. That is outstanding. That's an accomplishment and a half, man. I mean, that's the uh, first time for me ever seeing something like this, so it's pretty amazing. Well, yeah, that's a heavy. heavy. No, 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 no that's, that's amazing, man. What kind of size of footer? Before we had I know, I know. Hey, yeah. Holy <laughs> Jesus. What, 17? 15. 15? <laughs> like, <canoes. laughs> well, I think that's the least of my worries when it comes to curling. <laughs> Whether or not the thing covers my whole foot. <laughs> That's why I fell down on the first one. Let's throw a couple of you guys. Well, let's throw some, yeah, let's throw some. Actually, when you come out, you leave with your shoulders like a linebacker. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, so yeah, that should be, that's how I taught the kids. So when you get back here, you lean with your shoulders. So you're dead straight. Like that. Oh, that easy, huh? Yeah. I'm trying to stand up like you did. Let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah, and then you want to get back into this position like this. And then you lean with your shoulders. Yeah, and then lean with your shoulders. Yeah! That was pretty good. How's the sweep been going? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> that's, that's a recipe for an injury. So you're doing like a 30 second squat, right? Yeah. Even lower. We're getting out of it. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, it's been pretty good, isn't it? I think it's in the ring. Oh, you told me. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Look at this shot. Oh, yeah. Got this. <laughs> hey, that was pretty damn good. Oh, we got that. Yeah. Uh oh, that needs help. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 That's not bad. Same thing though, we gotta, we gotta hope it well. We gotta hope it woes a little. Well, it's not bad. This might be in the rings. Might have it, Pete. This is looking good. This is looking good. Oh, you got it. You did it, Pete. Right on the T line. Yeah! That's, no, no, oh, I don't know. Oh, there you're ready, there you're ready. You're gonna have to sweep it. Hard, 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 hard. Keep her going, keep her going, keep her going, keep her going, keep her going. Right on the button. Right on the button. Go, 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 go. You're welcome, Kyle. <laughs>
like so much fun. How cool would it be to curl against an Olympic gold medalist? Pretty cool. It's rumored that we might see Kevin again on the Green and Gold Gridiron Show, but this time we'll see him on the field and not the ice. We'll watch for that. At the end of last year, we asked you to email your suggestions, and one of your emails suggested that we do a segment on you, of the greatest fans in the CFL. So, of course, to start off our first installment of People of the Empire, we have the person who thought up the idea. It's Teresa Tukulis. I am Teresa Tukulis, and I've been a season ticket holder since 2002. I started at five, six years old. My dad and my uncles would take me to games. So this is during the dynasty years. They were season ticket holders, and it, it just became a passion. It, it's so hard to explain the, the feeling, the, it's like, a, it's like a high you get from watching the game and cheering for your team. And, and when they win, it's great. And when they lose, it's tough. But you're still, you're out there with, a, you know, how many, 35,000, 40,000 other people and sharing the same experience. How can you pass up something like that? Just so much pride in Eskimo fans. It carries through that sometimes when you, when you meet fans from other teams, yes, you meet those diehard fans that have that same kind of passion. But I find there's more Eskimo fans that have that kind of passion. They love the team. Like you say, we, we bleed green and gold, and you know we're part of the Eskimo Empire. Favorite memory, I guess, would be the 2005 Grey Cup. Of course, everyone knows overtime win with the Eskimos against Montreal, uh, almost passing out in the stands because we all forgot to breathe. We're all screaming so much. Um, but later that night, we were just, you know, having a few drinks, celebrating, and next thing we know, the Grey Cup walks in with the offensive line that night, and we're drinking out of the cup. So that must, you know, up to this point, is one of my fondest, fondest memories. I guess for for 2010, uh, my favorite memory thus far is having dinner with Coach Richie Hall. Uh, it was a silent auction item that uh, I had won at the Eskimos women's dinner last year, so I had the honor of sitting down with him and uh, uh, the manager of football operations, Dan McKinnon, for three hours. And basically we got to ask them both anything and everything that we want to know about the Eskimos and the Eskimo organization. Since 2002, I've been to every Grey Cup, no matter where it is and, and who's in it. And we have a, we've, our group of friends has grown every year. Um, we've had the fortune of, of meeting CFL fans across this country. So looking forward to hosting it this year in our city and showing those fans that have been such great hosts to us when the Cup was in their city. A great time here. Margo, all this talk about the Great Cup is getting me so excited. I can't wait for this great year of football to culminate right there, November 28th, at Commonwealth Stadium with our Eskimos in the big game. I'm counting the sleeps. I can tell you who hasn't been sleeping lately. Andrew Nowacki, Tristan Jackson, and Fred Stamps. They all had babies during the offseason, and so that is the topic in this week's Teammate Trivia with Alana Nolan. teammate trivia time with Tristan Jackson and Fred Stamps. We're going to ask them how much they know about Andrew Nowacki's newest addition. These two are new fathers as well. So first question, how many times per night does Andrew's baby get up? A4, B3, or C2? Four. Four. Two. Just two. How fast can Andrew change a diaper? A minute 30, one minute, or 30 seconds? 30 seconds. 45 seconds. That wasn't oh, one of the th options. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Ooh. Minute. Somewhere around there. Oh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. What does he say is the best thing about being a father? A, she looks like him. B, waking up with her. Or C, she takes his mind off football. I can't, I can't hear him. Stop making that noise back there. They're making a lot of noise. A, she looks like him. B, waking up with her. Or C, she takes his mind off football. Waking up with um, C. Oh, uh, waking up in the morning with her. Yeah. Well, that does it for our first ever half hour show. You can check out a brand new episode on Shaw TV Channel 10 this Wednesday starting at 4. You can also check it out at esks.com and shawtv.ca. And remember, Margo, our half-hour show only runs every Saturday, so next Saturday's show will be on July 24th. Until then, as always, go, go Esk, go. go! Here, switch it. You're not breaking that one. <laughs> I got a whole new respect for this game.
Play the next four on the Wednesday after. Oh, you don't. You said this was <laughs> You know, Margo, being down at field level when the games are on, you can just... You can. You just can. Oh, feel. It's just like... Oh. Start up the idea. It's Teresa. Sucalus. 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 There you go. Sucalus. 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 Well, that just about does it for this week's episode of the Green and Gold Grand Show. Wow. That's that's Remember, if you tune in this Saturday, you'll see a special half hour show. We'll even have interviews. Full hour. Full hour. Full half hour. Oh. <laughs> oh.